Hello, fine folks of the internet. Welcome to another episode of Fantasy Football with Small Media. I'm your host, Dave, and on today's episode, we're going to be touching base on the waiver wire must-owns, and we're going to dive a little bit into some sleeper options. Let's get into it. Hopefully... You guys did not get trampled the way I did by Derrick Henry, or maybe you were on the winning side of him, uh, or maybe you had CeeDee Lamb, you know, go out there and catch some bombs and carry you to the promised land. Let me know in the section down below in the comments, how was week six for you fantasy-wise? In my first segment, I'm going to touch base on the, the waiver wire must-haves. That was a, a handful, apparently. Uh, we're going to go through positional uh, spots, uh, quarterback all the way to tight end, and I'm going to give you one guy I think that is worthy of, you know, taking your hard-earned fab or your prioritization spot for your pick and, and going forward this week here in week seven. So starting with the quarterback position, we are going to go with the Browns quarterback, Case Keenum. Baker Mayfield, as tough as a son of a gun as he is, uh, he, he's, he's injured, you know? Um, there's no question there. He did reveal in his last press conference that he has a torn labrum. Uh, not fun. Now, don't get me wrong, it's in his left shoulder, not his throwing shoulder. Um, but he, and he's going to play. But however, they're on a quick week. They have week, uh, their game is on Thursday against the Broncos. And if anything happens, which the way things have been going for Baker and the Browns, something will happen. Case Keenum may get a chance to play against his 2018-16 uh, game starting team, the Denver Broncos. So I think you should grab him while you can, while Baker, Baker still has a problem or a chance to play because going forward, he's been he's just been hanging out with loose threads, you know. At the running back position, staying on the same team, we have Dearness Johnson of the Browns again. Now, I know we're staying with the same team, but the Browns have been riddled and plagued with injuries. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of teams out there that have had the same situation. However, with Kareem Hunt guaranteed out with a calf issue. Uh, he played through most of the game yesterday, uh, sorry, Sunday. Uh, and then he was, you know, out of the game for the rest. And and um, Nick Nick Chubb, who's very doubtful, I, I don't think he'll be playing. Um, you have Demetric Felton, the fullback, who will be playing as well. But this is going to give Darius Johnson, uh, you know, a young guy, the opportunity to, to run the ball on a team that leads the league in rushing yards. They're the only team in the league that has over 1,000 rushing yards. So he's going to get to play for a team that is there with a great offensive line a lot of opportunity and he could very well win you your fantasy week as a waiver wire pickup at the wide receiver position we have wide receiver Rashad Bateman for the Baltimore Ravens now the Ravens are firing on all cylinders they went from a probably the world's luckiest four and one team to you know a top five uh, uh, rankings team uh, because they beat the high-flying Chargers at home at M&T Bank Stadium. If you haven't had a chance to watch Lamar Jackson play football this year, you need to go and watch some clips, because not only is he getting things done on the ground as per normal, with all the running back injuries they've had in Baltimore, they have, they've had to go to the air. And Rashad Bateman was, their, was the 27th overall pick, the Ravens' first pick in the draft this year. And Harbaugh knows how to use his players. You can see that with all of the injuries they've had in the backfield, they've switched to the you know the throwing game, the passing game. And I expect Rashad Bateman to get his going forward. He did have um, six targets last week as well in, uh, in, in the big win against the Chargers. Now, I did not expect or plan for my whole segment to be the AFC North. It just turned out that way, so we'll go ahead and jump into it. But... Pat Frermuth from the Pittsburgh Steelers is a phenomenal option at tight end. That being said, Big Ben, Big Ben Roethlisberger, his progression looks like this. Deontay Johnson, is he open? Nope. Okay, we're going to wait. Let's check and see if Deontay Johnson's open again. Is he open? Not yet? Okay. One more time. Okay, fine. He's covered or he's whatever it is. I guess we'll throw it to Pat Frermuth. So you don't expect this of a rookie tight end very often. Um, in fact, it goes against the norm. Usually tight ends take two, sometimes three years to really start to develop. But Big Ben seems to take a liking to this guy. He should be available in majority of your leagues. He's only rostered on 17% of people's rosters. So go get Pat. Pat, uh, Pat, Pat Fairmouth. Now, in the next segment, I'm going to be touching base on some fantasy sleepers. Now, the way this works, these are some candidates that I'm going to throw at you guys. Again, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. 
of guys that are probably either on your bench or maybe even available in the waiver wire option. And I think that they're going to outscore their projected fantasy points. So that being said, we'll start off with the quarterback position. And that is Mr. Zach Wilson. I know. Not everyone's favorite quarterback. However, he's playing the Pats again. They're in New England. And this is round two of a soon-to-be amazing rivalry between two uh, rookie quarterbacks in the AFC East division. And so far on the year, Mac Jones for the New England Patriots has definitely shown that he is the better option, the better draft pick so far. However, after this bye week, after coming back from London, um, London, England, uh, I expect this young quarterback in Zach Wilson to be more prepared for this time around. Uh, be a little less nervous against you know Belichick and the crew, and I think he's going to outshine his projected fantasy points of 18. Just not enough. I think he's going to do better than that. At the running back position, we have running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, Daryl Williams, at tight. Or sorry, at the Tennessee Titans, he's projected 12 points. That's a decent amount. But I mean, man, throw some respect on this guy's name. He put up a 22 and a half point game last week against Washington. This is Tennessee. Their defense is not phenomenal. This is going to be a shootout. He's going to get touches down. Don't get me wrong. In the game against Washington, he was not very efficient. He had 2.95 yards per carry. Not great. But the volume's there. And he's he found the end zone twice. I expect that to happen again in a game where Kansas City's defense is not great. Titans' defense is not great. He should have a barn burner. Bet the over. Uh, and start Dale Williams. He should definitely score more than 12 fantasy points. At the wide receiver position, we're moving on to the Arizona Cardinals. Christian Kirk. The Cardinals are still undefeated. They're 6-0, and and they get to host the Texans next week. Christian Kirk is slated for 10 fantasy points. That's his projection. I don't think so. I think he's going to have more than that. Kyler Murray is balling out. He is leading right now. He, uh, the way for uh, paving the way for MVP candidate of the year, and Kirk is a big part of that. Now, don't get me wrong. He's spreading the ball around. Murray is spreading the ball around to AJ DeAndre. Uh, Rondell Moore is seeing less ticks of uh, you know less ticks of targets, and Max Williams is out for the year. And Zach Ertz is coming in brand new. He's probably not going to have quite the chemistry that you might hope uh, for for uh, if you're an Ertz owner. So I expect Christian Kirk to continue his targets. He's caught more, five or more balls in four out of six games this year. He did get in the end zone as well, and I think he's going to get in again. Moving on to the last but not least, a very deep dive into the tight end position. We're looking at Anthony Ferkser of the Tennessee Titans. Again, this matchup between the Titans and the Chiefs should be a barn burner. Again, this is a deep, deep option. I'm throwing at you guys, I know, but Ferkser is only projected five and a half points this week. AJ Brown and Julio Jones have not been exactly healthy, uh, and they've really limited Ryan Tannehill's options as of late. Now, I expect the Titans to keep this game closer than you might expect. It should be high scoring. Derrick Henry, the king himself, is going to do his thing. He's going to run the ball, and it's going to open up the play action. That's where Anthony Ferkser comes in. He's going to give Ryan Tannehill some extra hands out there to make some big plays, and I would imagine that he gets in the end zone as well. Now, I just want to say thank you for taking the time and watching our quick video today uh, here at Fantasy Football with Small Media. Again, I'm your host, Dave. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you want to continue and see what we have coming out going forward and follow us through the week-to-week -week progression of the NFL, make sure you subscribe. And if you, liked it, if you liked the video enough that you think someone else might like it too, don't forget to share it. Again, my name is David. I'm out.